Hey, brother. Ben Finding Dory is only three weeks away, which means the Pixar universe is about to once again expand and give us all new Easter eggs to uncover. Of course, it's impossible to know exactly what to look for, but I have a few ideas to help get you prepared. So these are my top 10 things to look for in Finding Dory. <laughs> great is this shirt? The clock. Okay, this list is in no particular order, but let's go ahead and knock the easy ones out first. 10, 9, and 8 are A113, the Luxo Ball, and the Pizza Planet truck. These three Easter eggs appear in every single Pixar film, with the exception of the Pizza Planet truck, which is only missing from one movie, The Incredibles. And actually, it did appear in The Incredibles video game, but I don't think that counts as canon, so... But in any case, it will be in Finding Dory, and Andrew Stanton, the director, even even gave us a clue on Twitter saying that it will appear within the first 20 minutes, so eyes open. A113, in case you don't know, is the classroom number at the California Institute of Arts where many animators first learn and hone their craft. As such, this easter egg transcends Pixar and can actually be found in anything animated anywhere, so always be on the lookout for this. The Luxo Ball, or uh, Pixar Ball, I'm never quite sure what to call it, first appeared in Luxo Jr., Pixar's first ever animated film, a short created by Chief Creative Director John Lasseter. And in the film, two lamps play with the ball. Fun fact, Luxo is actually a real life brand of lamps, but the iconic Pixar lamp, Luxo Jr., is not one of their products and not available for purchase. But at least not from Luxo. And the ball is not much easier to come by. As far as I know, the only place you can purchase this is at the gift shop at Pixar Studios on location in San Francisco. Finding Dory will at least partially take place inside of an aquarium, which I'm betting will have a gift shop. And that's where I'm thinking we can find the Pixar ball in this movie. If you missed any of those in The Good Dinosaur, the Pizza Planet truck can be found in the asteroid belt, A113 on the fence post surrounding the chickens, and the ball during their, uh, acid trip. Number 7, P. Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. One of the only things Dory could remember in Finding Nemo was the name and address of the dentist who kidnapped Nemo, and 13 years later, I think we all remember it too. Now, a picture of Darla has already been spotted in this image where Dory is being kept in quarantine. This makes me wonder if the employees at the Marine Life Institute have any connection to the dentist in Australia, like maybe they're related, maybe that would explain Darla's fascination with fish. In any case, I would keep my eye on any envelopes or boxes and see if you can't spot the iconic address. Number six, Lava. Ah man, you guys know how much I love Lava, the short film that played before Inside Out and tells the love story of two volcanoes. In Lava, we see some sea turtles that resemble Crush, although I doubt it's actually him. And we know that Lava is supposed to be like the creation of Hawaii. And since Marlin and Nemo and Dory are traveling from Australia to California, Hawaii would naturally be on their journey. And it looks like our team is traveling with the sea turtles. So, I mean, if there's not a lava Easter egg, I mean, that's, that's just a missed opportunity. Number five, John Ratzenberger. Yes, this is more low-hanging fruit. If you don't know, John Ratzenberger is Pixar's lucky charm and has voiced a character in every single Pixar movie. Finding Dory presents an interesting opportunity. In Finding Nemo, he voiced an entire school of fish, but since our heroes are traveling in a different direction, I doubt we're gonna run into the same school of fish. So, for the first time, Ratzenberger could voice two different characters characters inside like the same series. I think it would be kind of clever if once again he was a school of fish but just a different school of fish but who knows maybe that's too obvious. I mean they've been getting pretty sneaky with them. In The Good Dinosaur he had one line as Earl the Raptor and was barely recognizable so we'll see. Number four Alexander Gould. This is another voice easter egg. Alexander Gould was the original voice of Nemo in Finding Nemo, but it's been 13 years since then and he's grown up and his voice has changed since then, so Nemo will now be played by Hayden Rollins. But Pixar didn't forget about Gould and have announced that he will have a cameo in Finding Dory, but this could be kind of difficult to spot because honestly I have no idea what he sounds like. The only real hint we have is that it'll be an adult male, but keep your eye out in the credits and see if you can't spot who he was. Number three, 
by and large. By and large is the company in Wally that eventually takes over and ruins the earth with over pollution. The trailers for Finding Dory seem to make it pretty clear that pollution is going to be a heavy theme in this movie with trash just littered everywhere under the water. Not to mention Finding Dory is directed as we said earlier by Andrew Stanton who also happened to direct Wally. Plus, Pixar has used this Easter egg before. You can see BNL in Up as the company that forces Carl to leave his house, and in Toy Story 3 as the producer of Buzz's batteries. Number two, some one or something from Cars 3 or Coco. It's a tradition in Pixar to hide an Easter egg for their next upcoming movie in their current movie. For example, Hank the Septipus can be seen swimming at the bottom of the pool during the swimming scene in The Good Dinosaur. Pixar's next two films are Cars 3 and Coco, so for Cars 3 I mean just look for cars, I guess. Coco, on the other hand, is supposed to follow a 12-year-old boy named Miguel as he uncovers a family mystery about Dia de Muertes, the Day of the Dead. And we don't have a lot to go on except for this pic of Miguel and the logo, so any kid with a guitar is suspect, as is any skull imagery. And number one, the Tank Gang. It has felt like a foregone conclusion that Nemo's tank mates from Finding Nemo would make it back into Finding Dory, but now I'm not so sure. Andrew Stanton recently tweeted that if you're really patient, you will get to see them. Maybe. What a weird way to say that, but to me it sounds like it's going to be a post credit scene, or maybe even like a post post credit scene, like after the lamp comes out and hops again, you wait a little bit more and then they appear. So just like really deep in if you want to see the tank gang. I guess my advice is sit through the credits because there's probably going to be something at the end, especially if we haven't seen the tank gang yet. The real question will be, did they ever get out of those bags? There you go, that's my top 10 things to look for in Finding Dory. I hope that helps you with your egg hunting. After you see the movie, you'll have to come let me know what kind of stuff you found. And down in the towel section, please let me know other Easter eggs you hope to see in this movie or other things you think I missed. Ben, that's it for me. I'll see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing. Guys, I am excited to announce that this week's episode was brought to you by Audible.com. Audible is one of my favorite apps on my phone. I listen to it all the time. If you don't know what it is, they are the world's largest library of audiobooks with over 250,000 titles. So there's something for everyone. And you can get your own 30 day free trial by going and signing up today at audible.com slash SCB. They have also asked me to recommend you a book. So today I'm going to recommend you the one I just finished listening to this morning, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. And actually this morning was the fourth time I finished listening to it. That's how my I love this book. You guys know that here at Super Carlin Brothers we are all about Easter eggs and that is what this book is all about. It is one giant Easter egg hunt that takes place in the future inside of a virtual reality game but is based on 80s pop culture. Any and everything from the 80s is fair game, including books, movies, music, and especially classic arcade games. I seriously love this book so much. And bonus, it's read to you by Will Wheaton, which is even better when you realize that in the book, there's a Will Wheaton Easter egg. I really hope you go check it out. And again, you can sign up for a 30 day free trial today at audible.com slash SCB. The app itself is pretty great too. It has a lot of cool features like a dark mode and a sleep timer, which I use pretty much every single night now before I go to bed. Seriously, if you've never experienced the book this way, I highly recommend it. It's just a whole new way to experience all of your favorite stories and a really great way to support this channel. 